Hey everyone, Josh Smith with GottaBeMobile.com. We're back with iOS 7 hidden features. If you've gotten this free Apple update, you now have a brand new look on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, and it's packed full of hidden features that just aren't really apparent when you first install the update. So we're going to show you all these so you can get the most out of your iOS 7 power device, impress your friends, save you some money, and have a better time. First thing is FaceTime audio. So this is really great. Here, I'm able to use the same over the internet FaceTime that we do with for video calls, but I can do it audio only. So this is great if I want to call someone, but I don't really want to do a video with them, I'm driving, whatever. With this, I don't use any of my minutes. International calls are free, as long as they're on FaceTime as well. And the audio quality is insanely better than anything you're going to get on a Verizon to AT&T or T-Mobile to Sprint. Any of those types of connections just sound crummy compared to this right here. So, better quality and you can save some money. We also have some new Do Not Disturb options. So, Do Not Disturb isn't new here, but what we do get is a new silence option. So, it can be silence always. So, even on this screen, if I have Do Not Disturb on, I'm not going to get any notifications um, or sounds, but if I change it to only when phone is locked, if I have it in my pocket, it'll be quiet while I'm in a meeting or whatever, but if I take it out at the end of the meeting and I'm looking around, checking my messages and stuff, and I get a call, then it'll come through just like normal. Other options, we have this new multitasking menu, and with it, we can close just one app with a swipe up, or if we want to close multiple, you just get two fingers on, and you see they both are sliding up, slide them out, and they're good to go. So you can close multiple apps at once. Handy little feature there. Another thing that is really cool is the ability to block calls. So say we jump into a contact, someone who's you know giving us a rough time, we don't really want to talk to them anymore. We can scroll down to the bottom of their page, so just hop in here to one of these contacts. And so what we have is an option to block this caller. When we tap that, we can block the contact that handles FaceTime, that handles iMessage, and that handles phone calls. It's all built into iOS 7, so you don't have to worry about you know, installing a third-party app, jailbreaking, blocking someone on your carrier's website. Boom. It's all handled right there, and it's really nice. You're on an, a limited data plan, like most people out there. You can now head into the cellular set in, settings, and you can see which apps are using the most data. You can see that I used quite a bit of data in the App Store. Uh, we can scroll down, find some other big offenders, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, hidden under System Services, will tell you how much you've used as a personal hotspot. So it's a quick way to see what's happening and you can toggle data on and off for any of these apps. That way you have really good control over each of your apps. On the iPhone 5S, Apple talks a lot about the burst mode. Now we don't have burst mode per se on the iPhone 5, but we have something similar. The iPhone 5S does 10 frames per second when you hold the shutter in. The iPhone 5 will do burst mode. So if you watch this bottom option right here, you'll see that I'm taking multiple pictures. It's about three frames per second on the iPhone 5. And what we also don't get here is we don't have that processor that's combining all of them and stuff. So that's one thing that you won't find uh, on this, but you can still take some burst. Another thing you can do when you're taking a video, we shoot a video here, you can pinch to zoom. So you can zoom in, it's a digital zoom, but it's a nice way to kind of follow in to someone who's walking away or riding away or something like that. Nice little feature there on the iPhone 5 with iOS 7. You won't find these burst and zoom options on the iPad or on the older iPhones. Another thing that's nice is when you go into the App Store. So you used to be only be able to download apps 50 megabytes or smaller. Now they bump that up to 100 megabytes so it's easier to get your updates while you're on the go. Another really handy feature, I don't use this a whole lot because I live someplace where basically you have to drive everywhere you go, but you know, say you live in a bigger city, 
or you're just on vacation in a bigger city and you're walking. Well, you know, it's a pain to go into maps and always toggle and say, okay, you know what, really, I'm, I'm walking here. Tell it you want preferred walking directions and your iPhone will assume that you're going to walk most of the time. You can still say, hey, I'm driving now, but nice feature, must have if you walk everywhere in the big city. So another really cool feature, we had into videos here, we just shot this video and you know sometimes you shoot a video that you don't want to share on YouTube or Facebook or something like that, kids, pets, you just want to keep it within the family. Well, you can tap share on videos, iCloud, and you can share to a photo stream. This is new in iOS 7 and the videos show up online on a website that people can go to if they don't have an iPhone or iPad or something like that and also they'll show up in their shared photo streams really handy feature for sharing video that you don't want everyone in the world to see. So we have another really cool option here. Just got to pull up the page. So when you're using Safari, we have a whole new look. We have a new menu down at the bottom and we have this bar up at the top. And as you start to scroll, you actually kind of lose that. That hides down here and hides up here, which is great because you get a little bit more room there. But say you want that back, you can just tap on the bottom. And even if, so say I'm really close to a link or something, I'm really close to that read more link here. But if I tap there, it's going to pull that bar up and it won't click on that link for you. Really handy feature, especially if you want to get to your tabs. Another handy feature dealing with app updates. So we've all gone and seen the app store saying, hey, you have 93 updates because you haven't you know, been paying attention to it. Now we can go in, go to our settings, iTunes and App Store, slide down to the bottom, and we just turn updates on for automatic downloads, and your app updates will just roll in as soon as they come out. Really handy feature. iTunes Radio is a new big deal it is basically a Pandora type competitor, but if you like to hear your music unedited, right off the bat, you're not going to see that. So if you start a station, any station, as you get into it, this little eye up here, tap that, and you can turn explicit tracks on, and you can tune the station. So you can hear hits, you know, just the top stuff, make it a variety, a little bit of new, a little bit of hits, or if you want to discover new music, slide it over to discover, and you'll end up with just the new stuff. Another really cool feature here in iMessage. Just let me pull up this iMessage real fast. So here you want to see when you sent these messages. Uh, right here, there's you can see where these were sent, but in case you want to know when exactly they were sent, you can just slide over. So just slide over and you'll see the time that those were sent. Really handy in case you want to, have, want to check in on when that was sent. Okay, here's another cool feature. If you want to go back to your main screen on pretty much anything, this can be settings, this can be iMessages, notes apps. When you're deep in here, you can just slide in and go into your different settings. Boom, slide back, and you don't have to go up to a touch control at the top. We can also control a little bit more with Siri. Turn Bluetooth off. So we can turn system settings on and off. So she'll turn it off or turn it on depending on what you want. And then you can toggle it again right there. So it's a nice handy way to control some settings with Siri. There's another cool new thing. Uh, basically, you can dismiss a notification. So sometimes a notification will come in and it'll cover up something you're trying to tap at the top. So we should get a notification here. And I can either pull down to access it or tap on it or I can just push up and it will go away. So if we get this next notification, say we're in Safari and we want to get to that address bar, but this notification comes in, and sometimes they hang around for a little longer than you really want, just swipe up and it's gone. The compass. So they brought back a new feature, or they added a new feature to the compass. When you first open the compass, you'll, okay, we'll, we'll calibrate this real fast. 
So you have your compass, but say you want to make sure something's level, slide over, and you have a level. So I can see that my table's level, and if you tilt it, here you can see I have these two bubbles, so I can lay it flat on a surface and see if it's level that way. So that's a handy built-in feature. You don't have to go to a third-party app to get that. We can also change iOS 7 text. So Apple went with a new text that for some people is a little harder to read. So if we go into general, first stop is text size. This is dynamic text. It will change text size throughout at least Apple's apps. I think it may work in some third-party apps. We haven't gotten that far yet. So you can change the text size, but you can also drop into accessibility and you can switch to bold text. That's gonna restart your phone, but instead of this slightly skinny text that we have in iOS 7, it'll make it bolder, a little easier for some people to read. So that's a nice handy feature there if you're trying to you know, read stuff, you can't read the uh, names under these app icons. So I've got another cool one for you. You hate entering iTunes gift cards. You don't have to anymore. Open up iTunes, and this is great even if you're gonna use it on your computer. Hit redeem, enter your password. And then you have the option here to use camera. And if I had a gift card, I could just hold my gift card back here. It would scan it, bring it in, and boom, we're ready to spend some money in iTunes. Okay, when Siri, we get upgraded features, we also get a new option. So general, Siri, and now we can choose gender, so we can have a male or a female voice without changing the language. This is a nice feature. Both voices are improved from iOS 6. They feel a little more natural. Siri still doesn't always do what you ask, though. When it comes to folders, big improvement in that you can have multiple pages. So here I have some apps I use often on this screen, but I also have a second page where I have an app that I never use and you can create multiple folders, multiple uh, pages within them just by holding and once you're in that drag mode you can drop one over here and there you go, you've created a page inside your folder. There's another cool feature, we gotta get lined up for you real fast. If you are trying to create appointments or something like that, you can tap on different things with inside iMessage. So if someone sends you a date, you can tap on that or a time. So I'm not getting any right now, but basically if you see a time or date inside iMessage, you can tap on that, it'll open up a little thing that lets you create a new calendar entry. And then finally, one of the really cool features is iOS 7 kind of learns where you go and it'll pick up on where work is and where home is. And you can see some of these in settings. If we can track it down. Essentially, it's tucked away under your location services. And we'll have the directions up on the website. But where you see this is if you pull down the notification center on this new today view, if you're not at home or not at work and it senses that it might be time for you to go there, you'll see something right here that says 10 minutes to home. And so you kind of know, okay, it's normally 10 minutes to home. And then say you pull out your phone and check the Today screen at about 4.30 when you're thinking about going home. And all of a sudden it says 45 minutes to home. Well, it must have picked up on some kind of issue that's going to delay you getting home. So you can kind of factor that in. Anyway, that is 25 hidden iOS 7 features. You can head over to GottaBeMobile.com and check out all of these details on how to get to these settings, what to do, shareable. Hit the like button down below. Share this video with your friends. Head to GodofMeMobile.com.